Hey, man, I'm so happy and excited this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, this man has been nominated for 13 Grammys and has uh, had uh, one of the longest-running number one streaks on Billboard. Y'all, please welcome gospel great Bishop Marvin Sapp. Man, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. How you doing, man? Man, I'm tired, man. They've been running me all over the world. <laughs> you drop, uh, yeah, yeah, that back and forth up to Alabama A&M with them babies. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. But, you know, we doing what we doing. Hey, man, congratulations on your new biopic, Never Would Have Made It, uh, The Marvin Sapp Story, which airs this Sunday at 9, 8 Central on TV One, and you actually wrote, produced, and starred in this film. Yeah, ain't that unbelievable? I'm telling you, now, you did it all. <laughs> yeah, man, thank God. <laughs> Never would have made have it. A big budget. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> 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 no, 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 but really, man, this, this, is, this is a great honor to have the opportunity, and I'm grateful to TV One, Swirl Films, to all the team members that, you know, helped us pull this thing together, man, and I think it's going to be something that people are going to be encouraged by and and going to be uplifted by i really think it's going to be a blessing in so many now you know what you grew up in church and so did i every time you sing i can't do nothing but sit in the audience and cry every time i'm somewhere and you sing it i have to actually get up and walk out and put my finger up like i'm in church because i'll be <laughs> crying so much now you were pulled into hanging out with the in crowd when, and you start smoking and drinking at an early age what was the moment that changed you and shifted directions for you well, I started smoking and marijuana at age 12, started drinking a pop of pills at 16. I started my first line of cocaine in the basement with my boss at 18. And I was in church every mm. Sunday. Mm-hmm. And what's so amazing is um, what changed my life is, is my cousin got killed. Mm. And when he lost his life, you know, and it, it just really just said, Marvin, that's not the type of lifestyle that you want to live. And, you know, again, my mother and father got divorced, and I was just being very, very rebellious and, and just got caught up and got caught out. But but thankfully, I had a mother that made sure that, you know, no matter what, I grew up in that day and time where church wasn't an option. You know, right. you can stay home. You know, if you lived in the house, no matter what you did, Monday through Saturday, You're Sunday going. morning, you <laughs> had to have your robe pressed up and your clothes ready, and you had That's to be right. at that church house at 1030, or you had to be moved out by one. <laughs> right. Okay. right. So, True. Those were your options, you know. So, but um, I'm grateful, man, because, and I'm grateful, y'all, because God, I mean, He's just, He really is a keeper. It, I yes, mean, He really, they, when they put that stuff in your system, really, when your parents give you those moral, you know, uh, that moral grounding and, and, and make sure that God is a part of your everyday existence, you know, what you put in them, it will come out. It will. It just will come out. I don't care what nobody's saying. Right. Yeah, and another thing you cover in your film is your friendship and your loss of your beautiful wife, Melinda. Now, a lot of people might not have known how far you two really go back. She actually managed you not only as an artist, but even growing up at 14 at Baskin Robbins. (laughs) <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah I, I met my wife in the third grade. We went to elementary school, middle school, double dated for the senior prom in high school. Wow. She was with another guy, with another girl. But my first job, my first job, she was like the assistant manager at Baskin Robbins. And uh, when I got hired, she trained me. That's that's mm. a true story. How did y'all find this stuff out? <laughs> well, yeah, we, we, we do our research. We now. find it out. We're trying to figure out how it was working on this film with you, you know, speaking of your wife and having such a long history with her. Was this a healing or was it cathartic for you? You know, it was cathartic. And, and, and honestly, you know, it, it was during this time 12 years ago when she did when the whole process of her transitioning from this life to life eternal began to happen. So, you know, my kids and I, you know, watching the movie, you know, we remember conversations and things of that nature because she passed away on the 9th of September, 12 years ago. So it was during this time when we were planning uh, Marvin's Sweet 16 party, Madison, I mean, Michaela's uh, 13th birthday party. And uh, she was actually at MD Anderson um, getting treatments and, and caught a, 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 a private jet back to Michigan for Marvin's Sweet 16 party and then went back to Texas 
And then after the Sweet 16 party, I went back to Texas with her. So, I mean, like, you think about all of these different things and, and her planning Michaela's party with her and then making me promise not to cancel the party. And we didn't. I mean, she passed on the 9th. Uh, Michaela's birthday party was on the 13th. And uh, Michaela actually's birthday is, is the day before her mother died. So, you know, when we look at all of these dates and think about everything that transpired, you know, it's, it's emotional. Without, when, yeah. you know, I, I can't even say anything else. But at the same token, you know, my kids have done extremely well. They're 28, 25, and 23 now. Uh, Marvin, my oldest son, just got engaged to an amazing girl. And he works for Amazon Web Services. Congratulations. Yeah. Michaela's in her master's program. Madison's about to graduate from Alabama A&M with yeah. a dual bachelor's in psychology and biology. I mean, they've done extremely well in spite of the circumstances that they've had to endure. And, uh, you know, your mother put a great foundation in them. And it just, you know, me building on that foundation, you know, I think – they're great kids and I mean, great adults too. So I'm blessed. I want everybody to watch this movie because I think that it's going to be something that is going to encourage so many, you know, it's a family movie. If, if your child is wayward, if your child is out there in the street doing stuff that you don't want them to do, um, this is a story that's going to encourage you to tell you that no matter how bad they are, um, that they still possess the ability to turn things around. If you find yourself in a position where you're sick, and you got a diagnosis that you don't want, uh, that you never thought that you would have. It, it speaks to the fact that God is a healer. He can heal through the medication, or he can heal through his, like, hand of mercy and grace. It also speaks to the fact of, you know, if you're dealing with a traumatizing situation, a loss that's beyond your control, that God still can heal and keep you moving even when you want to stand still. So this movie is going to be a movie that I believe that is going to hit every aspect of every person's life and keep them encouraged and keep them moving. Because all of us in my clothes, as a preacher, we would say, have had never would have made it moments. Mm. Man, man, thank you. Uh, uh, so, hey, hey, you know, uh, Bishop, thank you for all that you do. I got to get out there uh, to your church in, in Fort Worth, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out. Shout out to Chosen Vessel. Y'all can come. Yeah. If you're in the DFW, come check a brother out. I'm right in Fort Worth, Texas. Come on. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I mean, because I've seen some of your services online, and I I got to come out there. Uh, to, you do Bible study on Wednesdays, right? We do. No, we do Bible study on Bible study on Tuesday, but it's it's uh, we do virtual. I do virtual, so okay. We just watch the other Tuesday night virtually, but Sunday we start at eleven a.m. We out by one. I don't play. Right, man. I, I'm so happy, man, for you and 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 uh, excited for you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh. For everybody who is not ready, uh, just let everybody know real quick, how can they follow you? You can follow me on any and or every one of my social media platforms, at Marvin Sapp on Twitter and or Instagram, or you can go straight to Facebook, look for official Marvin Sapp page, hit like. Listen, I'm close. I'm like 800 and I'm 882,000. Come on, let's take me over a million this weekend, y'all. Hey. And watch, hey. this movie. watch this movie. Watch this movie. The movie is never would have made it. Uh, the Marvin Sapp story, which airs Sunday at nine eight Central on TV One, directed by uh, one of my good friends and my one of my uh, mentors, Russ Parr, uh, directed this movie. And uh, j- just a side note, man, pl- uh, Bishop, pray for my aunt, my aunt Carol. Uh, she ain't got no knees and can't pray to Jesus. Just keep it lifted up as you do your service, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> see that, Bishop? See that? There you go. That's why me and you can't. Be, that's why we can't be in a room together, bitch. See, I asked you nice. Pray for my auntie. She ain't got no knees and can't pray to Jesus, bitch. Why? You? And I was just finna come to your church, son. See how you do, <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Y'all give it up for Marvin Sapp. <laughs> Sunday, nine eight central on TV One. Y'all make sure y'all check it out. Y'all more Ricky Smiley Morning Show coming up. Ricky Smiley Morning Show, baby.